and I have acetate. Yes. So ammonium is the partner of who? Ammonia. Ammonia. And he is a weak uh, base. Yes. Ammonium is a weak, therefore a base. Con yeah, conjugate acid. We'll call him a conjugate acid. All right, we don't have ammonia. No, we have so, ammonia. Oh. So that makes him a weak acid, right? Mm -hmm. But we also have acetate. Comes from acetic acid, which so, is a weak acid. So acetate C2H3O2 negative. His partner would be acetic acid, who is a weak acid. So that makes this guy a conjugate base weak, or a weak base. base. So if we have a weak base, this is what we actually have mixed together, right? Yep. We have a weak base and a weak acid. Who wins? The one with the bigger K. The one with the bigger K. So we must look at the K. Yes. But we have a tricky question here. Yes. We should have probably done this third. Oh, well. What is the K of ammonia? 1.8 1 1 times, times 10 to the negative 5. 10 to negative 5. And the K of acetic acid is 1.8 1 1 .8 times 10 to the negative 5. Hmm. So what would be the K A of this? Now, actually, Mr. Sams, I wouldn't put it in the calculator. Okay. If this is 10 to the minus 5. Okay. This ammonium will be roughly about equal to 10 to the minus uh, 9. Yeah. Because Ish. 9 and 5 is 14. Right. And the KB of this one would be about equal to 10 to the minus 9. In fact, they would be the same because these values actually turn out to be the same thing. So this brings us to a cool chart, okay, which we have a little bit out of order. Yeah. Is that, well, maybe not. If the KA is equal to the KB, the pH is 7. Yes, so it's neutral. So it's neutral. So we have a neutral one here. You'll see we have one of each, I think, in this particular problem set. All right, our second chemical is ammonium cyanide. We'll create a new screen. So if I have ammonium, I like to do this in a chart. Ammonium, and his partner is ammonia. Now, we only have ammonium. All right, we only have ammonium, pardon me. This is a weak base. And his K? 1.8. B is... 10 to the minus 5. We'll just okay. round. All right. And then this ammonium is a weak acid, and his K, A, is about 10 to the minus 9, which we just chatted about. Right. Our second chemical was cyanide, yes. CN negative. His partner would be HCN. HCN. So he is, HCN should know, is a weak acid. We then yep. look up on the weak acid table. Mr. Sam's is... 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. His K, A, is about... 10 to the minus 10th. Therefore, cyanide's Kb is about 10 to the minus 4th. Now, which is bigger? Now, what we're going to compare, the chemicals that we actually, actually have, have present. present are these two chemicals right here. Yep. So, the Kb is bigger than the Ka. Yes. So, therefore, if you had a solution of ammonium cyanide, we're not going to try and calculate it. We just want to do it conceptually. Well, the KB wins. So therefore, this solution would be... Basic. Basic. Do you see how this system works? All right, and we have a third chemical that we want to test, yeah, and that would be... Aluminum, aluminum sulfate. Sulfate. You know what? We're going to skip aluminum sulfate. Why would I do aluminum sulfate? Because that makes... Lewis acid? It's a Lewis acid problem. That's a, almost a too complex one. Yeah. Let's do another one. Let's throw in a different sure. one, and it will be... So let's change that aluminum thing, and let's do ammonium fluoride, NH4... F. F. So well, the that chemicals exists. that you actually have are ammonium. I don't know. Sounds kind of nasty. It does. <laughs> and flu fluoride is a dangerous chemical. You have yeah. ammonium and fluoride, but we're going to look at who their partner is. Who's the partner of this? Well, you've already done this one. Ammonia's, ammonium's partner is ammonia. <laughs> and his K, he's a weak base, and his Ka is 10 to the minus 5. five. Therefore, he is a weak acid, and his Ka is 10 to the minus Nine. Nine. By the way, I don't know if we made this clear, but the exponents are going to add up to minus 14. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. 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 Nine plus five is 14. Negative. Yeah. Negative 14. Right. Yeah. So the fluoride, his partner is HF. HF is a weak acid. Mm -hmm. And a weak acid, his Ka 7. is... 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Negative 4. So, yeah. So his K... He'd be weak base, and his KB would be equal to about 10 to the negative 10. 10 to the minus 10th. So who wins here? The ammonium wins. The ammonium wins. 10 to the minus 9th is bigger. 10 to the minus 9th 
is bigger than 10 to the minus 10. So therefore, this substance, the acid wins, so this would be acidic. Yes. So if we go back to our chart here, um, the Ka wins, and therefore it's acidic. Okay? There you have it. That's it. Okay, we have one more big topic to talk about. This is actually pretty simple. Well, it's, it's all conceptual. So all yeah. the mathy stuff, just <sighs> take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. It's now gone. No uh, math in this No concept. more math. It's a conceptual piece. Okay, now, what happens to acids based upon a couple of things? Now, one of these things, at least in our class, we teach a somewhat out of order if you are out in the internet land. We have not spent much time with our AP kids talking about polarity, but we're, they have some background. Okay, what is polar? What does that mean, Mr. Sam? Polar means it has an N, like a plus N and a minus N for in chemical times. Terms. Like a magnet, yeah. although at a very, very, very tiny scale because looking at chemicals. So if something is more, the more polar something is, what do you think about about it? More polar, it has a, a more of a plus end, more of a minus end. Um, I'm going to say more polar equals stronger bonds. Got it. I wasn't sure what you are getting at. There. Yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about here. Okay, not that... <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. This is my lecture, and he doesn't know what I'm doing. I got <laughs> it. Okay. So we've got a polarity, and then we also have something called bond strength. Now, bond strength, of course, it sort of makes sense. The stronger the bond, the the weaker the acid. Yeah. The, the stronger the bond, the weaker the acid. And so, we have a strange thing here: is that we have uh, we're gonna look at uh, five div or probably four different acids. We're gonna look at HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. Yeah. An interesting thing that you think about is that the actually also the more polar let's actually write this too I didn't want to say this the more polar the stronger the acid so the more chances for it to break apart so we have a situation so on this one we kind of have an interesting thing is that the more polar the let's just do this more polar equals stronger acid. More chances for it to break up. But and also then the and then we'll say this the weaker the bond equals a stronger acid. So we have both things we have a problem here. So if we look at HF, HF because of its polarity, it's the most polar because F is the most electronegative atom on the periodic table. This is the most polar. So this is polar. So we would and this is less polar. Right. They're still polar. Right. Um, you would expect the HF to be strong. But you see, because of this bond strength, which is very large, actually unusually large, it makes this weak. Yeah. And where these ones, we kind of have intermediate. We have the least polar, but we have a pretty weak bond. So that's why it keeps these three acids weak. Okay. Hopefully that kind of clears it up for you or as much as mud. I don't know. Yeah. More thoughts on that, Mr. Sam? No. Uh, my thought is that the next concept is much easier to understand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how about oxy acids? What's an oxy acid? Acids that have oxygen in the anion. So if I have an acid with oxygen, um, which ones are the strongest? Now, we can actually just look at our table here. Mm -hmm. um, perchloric acid uh, in HClO4 is a, has, is a strong acid, therefore has a very large Ka. The next one, HClO3, the Ka is 1. Still pretty good size. Yeah, pretty good. This one is 10 yeah. to the minus 2. Yeah, and pretty, this is pretty large for weak acid, and, this and is then bad. that one's tiny. And then we have a second set of acids, the sulfuric and the sulfurous acids. Notice. And then the nitric acid and nitrous acid. What do you see it's as the pattern? It's looking to me like the more oxygens you have, the stronger the acid. More O equals stronger acid. That's exactly correct, Mr. Sams. But the big question is, why? I'm going to say, let's look at the structure. So if I were to draw the structure of HClO4, which I didn't put in the podcast because it was copyrighted, um, HOCLOOO, um, -O -O, that's HClO4. This one, one thing about oxygen, what do you know about oxygen, Mr. Sams? Uh, it's pretty electronegative. Not quite as much as fluorine, but it's right next door. Yeah, remember on the electronegativity table, fluorine is the top dog and oxygen is pretty much second pace. Second place. 
So what's going to happen is, is th these guys, they love electrons. So yeah. uh, electronegative means they love electrons. No, no, no. And so what's going to happen is the charge center is going to be way over to the right as, yep. as it's drawn on this thing. And that's going to cause this to be a very polar. Yeah, so that end of the molecule gets to be very negative. Because there's lots of O's that are pushing the electrons yep. over to the now, right. Now, if they're hogging electrons, the, that bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen gets very weak because the electrons want to go the other direction. They want to go towards all those oxygens. So if those electrons aren't there to make the bond, hydrogen goes, bye-bye, I'm out of here. Now, if I do um, on the opposite end, the HOCl, this is polar, but it's just weakly polar. Right. The chlorine and the O, you don't have all these extra O's over here pulling it away. No. And so that makes this bond is stronger. Making it a weaker acid. Remember, strong bonds make weak acids. Weak bonds make strong acids. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that. You may want to read this section. It's pretty, yeah. pretty cool um, in your book about the effects of structure on acid. And you'll probably properties. get one multiple choice question like that on the AP test. That's yeah, usually how it shows and up. And probably if you just knew more O's make stronger acid, You're that's probably good. Probably good. And we have yeah. just one last topic. I know this is a long pot. Well, it's not that bad. That's not that bad. Okay. It's just we've been doing it for too long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Acid-based properties of oxides. We've actually covered this again, but it's just so important to do. Yep. You have to be able to write balanced equations. Mm. With these. If I have a oxide, oxide, metal oxides plus water, always make what? Base. 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 Yeah, so base. We talked about base. that with the product prediction yeah. lessons, um, but we're just reinforcing it here. Pick a metal oxide, Mr. Um, uh, potassium. That would be KO, right? No. No? Why not? Oxide is minus two, potassium plus one. Oh, it would be K2O. All right. Yeah. React with water. It makes a base. Now, bases are what? Hydroxides. You must have the hydroxide. So it makes KOH. Two of them. And to balance, you have to put two. Now, wait, wait, wait. While we're at product prediction, is that how you would write that? No. You would actually write K2O. Probably they would ask you to have it in solid form. Mm -hmm. Plus water. Liquid. Liquid. And that would make two potassiums, because potassium hydroxide plus it's two a, hydroxide. That's a strong base, and strong ones we must write as dissociated on the epidemic. That is correct. And if we were to do one more, just for fun on that, what if I had iron Three oxide. Iron three oxide. F E two O three. Yeah, that's rust. We put rust in water. Now it's not going to happen to some uh, large degree, no. but you would get a small degree, Maybe. and you I would make F E O H three. And to balance that, I have no idea. <laughs> It'd that. be a mess. We'll We're balance it later. <laughs> no, you could figure it <laughs> but out. But we would leave that one together because F E O H three is a weak base, so we do not dissociate it. Yes. So, leave so it together. notice I did not dissociate that. And then, of course, the opposite: non-metal oxides plus water makes what? Acid. Acid. Classic case of that. So, for example, I took diphosphorus pentoxide. Mm. Diphosphorus pentoxide plus water. What does it make? Phosphoric acid. Yeah, and that's H3PO4. That's that one from the long one from the last podcast. H3PO4. Mm -hmm. How long could that problem be? And I think to balance this, you need a two. I think, two. I think that might maybe in the three here, I think. Uh, you can go back and look yeah, at it. It makes phosphoric right. acid. Now, if it had made a strong acid, like so, let's say you had a reaction. Let's do one of those. SO3. Yeah, so let's say we take sulfur trioxide and we react with water. By the way, do not confuse um, SO3 is not the same thing as SO3 negative 2. They no. are not the same. SO3 is so gas. SO3 minus 2 is an ion. It has extra electrons. It has very different properties. In this one, we essentially just add them together. This yep. one makes H2SO4. But that is actually it's wrong. Right. Because sulfuric acid is a strong acid, so you would write SO3 plus H2O. This one actually has two correct answers. It's correct. makes H positive plus sulfate. 2H positive. 2H positive. Or you could you actually also write, write it. H positive plus HSO4 negative because this is actually a Probably more acid. correct. This is actually the more correct answer, the second one I'll recopy here. But either one will get you full credit on the AP test. Yeah. And for us too. Yeah. Okay. You at Internet Land, ask your teacher. Well, we have just done three podcasts in a row, and we are giddy. And we're really hungry. And we're hungry because it's lunchtime. <laughs> so we are going to eat our lunch. Okay. That's supposed to be a face. This is not working. Okay. No. We, the, you see that big red button, the, uh, the button with the red stop sign on it? Yeah, we I see it. We should probably push that one. You think so? Yeah. it would be done. There we go. That looks like somebody eating something. Mm. No? I have... Some chili and <laughs> polenta for lunch. All right. I, I have casserole of some kind. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.